Now at any given moment, you may be very tempted indeed to spunk out a ridiculous amount of cash on the latest super shiny Samsung or Apple flagship smartphone. But before you do that, come take my hand in a metaphorical and very much not pervy kind of way and let's have ourselves a merry old stroll through the wonderful world of mid-range smartphones. For around 400 quid or sometimes a bit less, you can get yourself a beefy blower boasting a gorgeous OLED screen, feature-packed cameras, some serious grunt for gaming, good bit of 5G action if you fancy some of that, and some specs that are truly trouser tent worthy and all for less than half the price of one of them overrated iPhone buggers. So this right here is my personal pick of the very best £400 and under smartphones that you can bag yourself right now as we melt our way through summer 2022. And if any of these blowers make you feel all tingly in the trouserial department, well you can check out my full unboxings and reviews right here on Techspert. Now one of the most impressive all-round mid-range phones right now is Google's Pixel 6a, which has the added bonus of being pleasingly dinky at just 6.1 inches. So not only can I use it one-handed, but I can also slip it into my jeans with relative comfort and pleasure. Now packed inside of that dinky plastic frame is Google's very first Tensor chipset, which also happens to power the Pixel 6 and Pixel 6 Pro flagship phones. And here on the Pixel 6a, this handles everything, including a bit of light gaming without a grumble. Although more intensive titles do cause it to stumble quite a bit. The OLED screen is a stunner, pretty standard for a mid-range mobile, although you don't get the nippy 90Hz refresh of many rivals. And like most phones at this price point, there's bug roll headphone jacks, so it is Bluetooth all the way, baby. You got pretty much the same camera tech as last year's Pixel 5a, but thanks to that Tensor chipset's Clever Clogs image processor and Google's usual software smarts, you can capture great looking photos at any time of day and even at night. The clarity and colour detail with Night Mode Active is just kind of nuts. Battery life is also solid and because this is a Google branded blower of course you've got that glorious stock Android experience with the guaranteed 3 years of OS updates and 5 years of security updates. So overall if you want yourself a compact phone that can pretty much do it all except for more hardcore gaming, the Pixel 6a is well worthy of that special place in your pants or bag if you carry your phone in a bag. Now, one of the Pixel's most impressive rivals at this sort of price is the OnePlus Nord 2T, which boosts the overall performance for any proper gaming fans out there. The OnePlus Nord 2T is powered by MediaTek's Bicep Flex and Dimensity 1300 chipset, which can absolutely blaze its way through any Android game out there. Good old Genshin is handled with nary a bead of sweat, helped along by those dedicated gaming tools. You've once again got yourself an OLED screen, this time a 6.43 inch AMOLED panel, with the added bonus of a faster 90Hz refresh rate, as well as another decent enough stereo speaker setup. So the OnePlus Nord 2T is just as great for kicking back with some Netflix action or your favourite bold tech twat. The Nord 2T's 4500mAh battery serves up enough screen on time to make it through a pretty long intensive day even for fairly demanding users and it also supports 80 watt fast charging when you bung a cable in it as well which is pretty ridiculous at this sort of price point. Oxygen OS is as customizable as ever with the guarantee of a few years of software updates to keep it fresh and secure. And while that 50 meg primary camera sensor can't quite capture pics as cleanly and as capably as the Pixel, it is still well up to the job of everyday snaps and sharp looking home movies. And if you're tempted but your budget can't quite stretch up to that OnePlus Nord 2T, well no worries, for 100 quid less you can always snap for yourself the OnePlus Nord CE2 5G, which is still a very capable wee blower. The design is downgraded to plastic and you've got a more basic mono speaker setup instead, but you still get great sound and audio via Bluetooth or the headphone jack, and that AMOLED screen is another 90Hz Full HD cracker, so media fans should be plenty sated. Gaming is smooth and satisfying on lighter titles like PUBG and Call of Duty Mobile, and even on Genshin Impact if you keep the graphics settings low, helped along again by the gaming mode, while the Dimensity 900 chipset handles everything else just as capably. And sure, the 64 meg primary camera is fairly basic, but it's still fine as long as the lighting isn't cack. Now certainly one of the more distinctive smartphones you'll find at this price range is the Nothing Phone 1, which starts from 399 quid and offers some decent specs to again rival that Google Pixel 6a. Forget the flashy lights on the back end because chances are, after piddling about with them for your first day or two, you'll basically forget they even exist. To me, that glyph lighting is just like an attention-seeking child absolutely off its tits on Haribo. But get past all that attention-seeking bollocks and you'll find you've got yourself a very capable mid-range mobile. After several updates, the various bugs and the less than impressive battery life have mostly thankfully been sorted right out. 
And not only can you now just about generally squeak through a full day of use on just a single charge, but you've also got support on the Nothing Phone 1 for wireless charging, which is an incredibly rare feature at this sort of price. That OLED screen is a delight like most rivals, the stereo speaker setup is decent, and this blower is nippy enough to play any game out there, Genshin Impact included. Plus, if you want an Android that looks like an iPhone, for whatever friggin' reason, this is probably about the closest you'll come with its chunky, flat-edged frame. Nothing's camera setup is gloriously streamlined, so you won't find any pointless macro nonsense or any of that other bollocks here, and it's good enough to grab good-looking pics and home movies, even in reasonably testing conditions. It's only really in proper low light where that camera stumbles a bit and the Pixel 6a starts to show its dominance, but apart from that, it's hard to really nitpick much about the Nothing phone beyond the usual complaints like the lack of a headphone jack, the lack of micro SD memory card support, yada yada. And if you're all about performance, you should also be well tempted by the brilliant Poco F4, which is only a minor evolution over the older F3, but still proper boss. This uses Xiaomi's MIUI launcher in a slightly pockified form, and this sports a more of a stock Android vibe these days compared with back in the past, except with tons of extra bonus bits lathered on top. Stuff like the dedicated gaming tools, and if you are a gamer, well, that Snapdragon 870 chipset is a blinder, offer an impressive grunt for any kind of gaming. You can even run the mighty memory guzzling Genshin Impact on high detail settings with next to no judders, helped along by Poco's dedicated cooling tech. Battery life is pretty bloody great, you've also got 5G support on top of Wi-Fi 6, so connectivity, no worries whatsoever. Poco has once again packed in a 6.67 inch OLED screen with 120Hz refresh and Full HD Plus resolution, although the sheer size of this screen means that images aren't quite as crisp as some rivals. However, you've got incredible contrast and Full HDR10 Plus support, while colours are proper poppy. As for that 64 meg primary camera, well, it's absolutely fine, if not as good as the Pixel 6a, again in more testing conditions, pretty much like most other phones in this best mid-range mobiles roundup. You've got to put up with the usual downsides as well, no headphone jack, no memory card support, and also Poco phones like Xiaomi phones, basically anything that runs MIUI, tend not to get much in the way of software support going forwards as well, so you might only get one or two OS upgrades, maybe only a couple of years of security patches as well, and it might not be the most timely at coming through. Also, bear in mind that the Poco F4 isn't a massive upgrade over the older F3 either, which still supports, for instance, that excellent Snapdragon 870 performance, and in my eyes, slightly better design as well. So if you do happen to see the Poco F3 going cheap, well, definitely check it out. Another solid choice is Xiaomi's Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus. Clunky name, but a decent handset, boasting smooth performance with a Dimensity 920 chipset. This MediaTek brain can breeze through games of Genshin Impact, while battery life is also decent. And even if you do somehow manage to completely drain that battery throughout the course of the day for whatever reason, well, it doesn't even really matter because the Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus supports ludicrously fast 120 watt wired charging. That's proper mental. The huge 6.7 inch Super AMOLED screen is a stunner supporting HDR10 streaming plus 120Hz refresh for any apps that can hit those highs. You got stereo speaker setup, headphone jack, expandable storage, all the goodies you love to see. On the software side, it's once again MIUI 12 in all of its batch mental splendor, complete with those unfortunate tardy software rollouts. While the 108 meg main camera sensor does a respectable job at this sort of price point, if not quite hitting the highs of the Pixel. Check out my full unboxing where I also compare the Pro Plus with the Redmi Note 11 and the Redmi Note 11 Pro. So many Xiaomi smartphones, it's, it's, it's a wee bit confusing at times. And I also recently had the chance to check out the fresh Xiaomi 12 Lite, which again doesn't serve up the best camera tech in this comparison, but it's a solid all-round blower in pretty much every other respect. Qualcomm's older Snapdragon 778G chipset provides the power here, but that still copes admirably with everything up to and including a good bit of gaming. The smaller 4300mAh battery still offers all-day play without stress, and it can be refilled quickly with 67 watt charging support. And that 108 megapixel camera does its job well in everything except for more murky conditions. It may not stand out particularly in any way, but the Xiaomi 12 Lite is still a good one and worth grabbing if you do see it in a sale. And another decent option at this budget price point is Samsung's Galaxy A53, even if it's not quite as good in some ways as the older A52s. For just under 400 quid, you've got a choice of four colours, including awesome blue. I'm not sure I'd really personally describe it as awesome, it's more of a, you know, that's, that's quite nice, a rather attractive, don't mind that at all. 
I also love the IP67 dust and water resistance, something shared with the Pixel, and Samsung fans will enjoy the feature-filled One UI experience that's not too different from the S22 flagships. And Samsung has also promised A53 fans several years of security and OS updates, similar to the Nothing Phone, the Pixels, the OnePluses, etc. Now 6.5 inch 120Hz Super AMOLED screen is a cracker, chucking out sharp Full HD Plus images complete with Samsung's trademark colours that positively pop, although you can opt for more natural output in the display settings. It's definitely a good one for your Netflix and in Disney Plus and despite the lack of HDR streaming support. And core blimey, lo and behold, the Samsung Galaxy A53 also supports micro SD memory cards to expand the storage, something you'll barely ever find at this sort of price point anymore. Although unfortunately, while the older A52s also had a headphone jack, that has been culled here for the fresher A53. Boo, hiss, etc. Sadly, where the A53 falls down a bit is the Exodus chipset of Samsung's own creation that's stuffed inside. With everyday use, you'll see quite a few judders, while memory socket games like Genshin Impact are more or less unplayable. Thankfully, the 5000mAh battery does at least make some amends, keeping you going all day long, even with plenty of hands-on time. And I feel like I'm repeating myself here, but while the camera tech's pretty good, it's not quite as good as the Pixel 6 here when it comes to more test and low-light conditions. Now my final smartphone recommendations at this mid-range price point come courtesy of Realme, a Chinese manufacturer well worth keeping an eye on. They've put out some absolute crackers lately and my first recommendation is the Realme GT Master Edition. This slick looking 6.4 inch blower boasts many of the same advantages as its peers including a gorgeous Samsung Super AMOLED panel with 120Hz refresh, a proper bit of eye candy when you're streaming endless Netflix or blasting through your favourite games all of which run beautifully courtesy of the Snapdragon 778G chipset and dedicated coolant tech. And you got full 5G support as well as Wi-Fi 6 connectivity as well, so no endless buffering when you're trying to enjoy a nice bit of tentacle hentai action. Did I say tentacle hentai action? I obviously meant streaming a good bit of classic British sitcom action on BritBox. Yeah, bit of Yurang Malord. Good stuff. The 4300mAh battery isn't as big as some others in this roundup, but you shouldn't struggle to last a full day, while there's 65W Super Dart Charge support if you need to give it a top up. And Realme's 64MB rear camera and 32MB selfie shooter are pretty respectable for this price point too. For a similar bit of scratch, you can also grab Realme's 9 Pro Plus Boston Superior Camera Tech. Now, Sony IMX766 sensor runs the show, same as the Realme GT2 Pro flagship, so you can expect good looking pics both day and night. Battery life is once again rather splendid with a 4,500mAh capacity cell safely steering you through a full day of use, no worries, and you've got 60W fast charging support on top. And while the display is 90Hz rather than 120Hz, it's still buttery smooth to my eyes. And it's super AMOLED tech, so you can expect crisp, poppy visuals again, whatever you're up to. The Realme 9 Pro Plus packs a punch for games, powered by the MediaTek Dimensity 920. And yeah, you got Vapor Chamber cool in here, so even Genshin Impact fans can keep on smashing goblins and slimes for hours at a time. You've got full 5G support, you've got a stereo speaker setup. And it's all wrapped up in a funky colour changing frame which turns a sparkly red hue when sunlight strikes that surface. Admittedly here in the UK it would be rather more apt if it changed colour when it was drizzled on a bit but at least we've had a pretty sunny summer so you know make the most of that. This thing ain't going to be turning red no more once September rolls in that's for sure. And last up a quick big up for the Realme GT Neo 3T which certainly stands out almost as much as the nothing phone with this dash yellow design. You'll either love it or think it looks like a pile of puke, but either way you're getting a gorgeous 120Hz AMOLED screen, strong audio support, a mighty 5000mAh battery with 80W charging, and that same Snapdragon 870 performance as the Poco F4. Ah, that is my roundup of the best £400 and under mid-range smartphones you can grab yourself right now in summer 2022. Quite a substantial list there, and I haven't even had a chance to go hands-on with absolutely everything. So, for instance, the Oppo Find X5 Lite, unfortunately I haven't even touched yet, and it looks like a really nice, slightly streamlined version of the Oppo Find X5 and Find X5 Pro flagships. There are also a couple of phones that I've reviewed that didn't quite make the cut for this list as well, like the Moto Edge 30, which is a very enjoyable little handset, but unfortunately a little bit too buggy and quirky at the time I tested it out. So hopefully a couple of updates time, all of those little bugs and issues will be sorted and it will definitely get a recommendation. And if you find your budget is too tight for any of these smartphones, no worries, your Uncle Spurt has got you covered. I've also rounded up the best £300 and under smartphones and the best £200 and under smartphones you can grab yourself 
right now in summer 2022. So go check out those videos. Please do pop subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech and have yourselves a really wonderful rest of the week. Cheers everyone. Love you.